You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, guys. <laughs> welcome to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. Yo, we're about to go live in a second here. Actually, we are live right now. That is so cool. Anyway, we have over 22,000 of you guys on the phone lines with us in the chat room on Google Hangouts, all of us decided to join us because you're in a treat. We have a special interview for you guys. So it is possible, it, well, put it this way, it is impossible for the energy you put out not to come back to you eventually. It may take a while and it may not come back to you in the way that you had expected, but it will come back. You cannot turn on a light and remain in the darkness. Each and every effort you put forth will make the world around you brighter. And the more value you can add to the lives of others, the more your efforts will be multiplied. Give the world and the world will give back to you many times over. Reaching your dreams is not a matter of wishing or taking. It requires an action. Give of yourself because the reward is in the journey. Your dreams will be meaningless if they require no effort or energy. By doing and by giving, you are spreading that you are, and that, my you friend, the is the essence of life. Started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the music or inside the book, inside the business where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family. And two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37 thousand live listeners and we've been at this for four solid years i appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey and we're still evolving baby it is all because of you most definitely we are the people who have dedicated their lives to music spirituality business literature art movies and research in every aspect and we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story man we've had celebrities on our show from grammy award winning artists to nominees, to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens, or people who think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out. To book your interview, or just to share a real cool story, email me at vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com. And that's V as in Victor. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do. And together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. You know the number to dial. 701 701- 801-9813. Text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. Feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here, but only as time permits. Sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour. And as always, all episodes are available 
for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube or any app from the google play or itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we ever aired well you're like i said you guys are in a treat tonight um tonight's interview and i hope i pronounced this correctly um but it's an arabic name like actually a hebrew name it's amira so we'll find out if i pronounce the right name. maybe amira who knows <laughs> but we'll find out we'll find out so anyway the mic dropped i'm not sure why it did that but um we all make music i don't, I don't want to say we all do but some of us make music to share it with the world and to have our voices fall upon an entire world of deaf ears if that happened you know if our voices fall upon a deaf ears that would be a tragedy to say the very least no one wants to be that tree falling in the forest somewhere making no sound well amira doesn't have to worry about that you hear her coming and her music sounds as as if she's bringing a host of other angels with her so with that, let's go ahead and welcome her to the show. Hi, how are you guys? Doing great. Did I pronounce your name correctly, first and foremost? Yes, it's Amira. <laughs> cool. All right. So, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am blessed by the best. Can't complain. Same, same here. Yeah. So, um, how did you celebrate our last national holiday in the USA? The one that we call the Super Bowl. Oh gosh, I um, think it was family. <laughs> you know, nice. we, we we all gather at um, we gathered at my grandmother's house and we just sat and watched the football game, ate some food, you know, had a couple of laughs and had a good time. Sounds great. Sounds great. What team did you go for? Oh gosh, I'm not a football head. <laughs> oh, I'm not sports <laughs> at all. So I was just there to enjoy the game. I really wasn't, you know, rooting for anybody in particular. So. Whoever won got my vote, I guess. <laughs> nice, nice. So, you know, you were with family and there was food, so that's all that matters, right? Yeah. All right. So, tell us about this new single of yours called uh, Mathematics. Yeah, it's uh, called Mathematics. It's um, It was written by um, Mark Wolf Jr. And when I first heard it, I related to it 100%. So, it's pretty much just a breakup song, but it puts a different spin on the typical breakup in my opinion it it gives the it sort of kind of showcases the steps that people go through when they are in the process of breaking up with their significant other so not only it's not just you know talking about the breakup itself but like I said it just goes through the steps you know the first step being you know you try to make it work you want it to work and mm-hmm. then, you know, the second step is that you sort of kind of know that it's not working, but a part of you is still like, well, maybe we can make it work. But then you get to the third step where it's just you you come to terms with it and you just split ties. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's an awesome song. It has a nice beat. It's really like I love it. I think it's so sassy. Like I love singing that song. It's amazing. But yeah. So who produced so- it? Um, he did. Mark Wolf Jr. did. He produced okay. it and wrote it. So. Is um, will you be um, doing the entire EP with him? Uh, probably not entirely with him because we. I'm actually in the studio now working with a guy named O'Shea, and me and him cut a track called "Too Late" that I really, really love, and that's we're hoping that that's my second single for the EP, but. Mark might be, he might make another appearance, but I don't think the whole EP is just going to be about, you know, coming from me and Mark. So, we're going to put some variety in there. Nice. All right. So, mathematics, where did that title come from? Is is it like just putting two together, two and two together in the relationship or um, just basically summing up, you know, I don't know. You explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just, it's the, if you actually listen to the song, you hear a bunch of mathematical terms like, you know, um, I think it's in the first verse where he, where I go, um, um, we, we, we were like me and you, but not me and you, but we were like, all right, we, together we multiplied, like the issues that we had multiplied. So it mm-hmm. well, I, I would sing it for you, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just like a bunch of mathematical terms in there. And it's, like I said, it just gives it like a different spin. You know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it's, it's yeah. different. 
because you usually don't hear stuff like that from other songs. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. um, and what? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. And why do you feel like it's important to tell this side of the story? Well, because it's something that everybody goes through. You know, we've all, or at least most of us anyway, have been through in a relationship. You know, when you you've given it your all and then when it starts to crumble you try to hold it together but over time you realize that it's actually not going to happen and you have to come to terms with that sometimes on your own time and and, you know most of the time that doesn't happen overnight you know what I mean and I think that's another thing about that song it it shows the the progression you know what I mean like some people most people don't you know come to terms with leaving somebody that they they, they love or a relationship that they put their all to overnight you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i definitely think that this song is a, shows a really good example of that type of situation yeah okay and tell us why the genre of because you kind of do both pop and r&b but why do mm-hmm. both of those genres speak to you um personally musically uh because well uh, growing up, my mom, she sang a little bit as well. And when I was younger, she listened to nothing but R&B. Like the Drew Hills, the Whitney Houston, you know, the Monica's, the Brandy. She was, she, I, I grew up around that type of music. So that was embedded in But as I got older and I started listening to my own type of music, I sort of gravitated towards the pop side of things. And when I started doing my own thing, I I kind of sort of blended the two together to where you have essences of both pop and R&B in my music. So it's, it's sort of kind of bringing my, my, my past and my present together in mm-hmm. my future. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it's just a mess of me, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, as you grow in this music industry, are there other genres you want to explore? Sure. Um, I, I listen to... Every, I mean, I listen to all types of um, music. I listen to country, I listen to rock, I listen to, you know, pop, R&B, neo soul. Um, so I would, I think I would like to do that eventually, like to try to dibble and dabble into different genres just to see how, you know, what, what I can create in those separate genres and maybe, you know, make them my own. You know, pre, you never know what you, you can create unless you, you know, you try, you give it a go. So. I mean, right. I'm, I'm definitely not closed-minded towards that at all. So, I mean, if it, if the opportunity comes and I feel it, then I'm there. I'll do it. Definitely. Okay, let's say for for um, hypothetical sake, money is no issue for you. Mm-hmm. What would be your dream co-line in concert? Like, if you could choose anybody, any artist in the world to co-line, to co-headline a tour, who would that artist uh-huh. be? I think I would go with Beyonce <laughs> <laughs> or Jenny why, Jackson. Why Queen I, I think I can learn a lot from her. I mean, God, she's been in the business for so long. She's dibbled and dabbled into everything. She sings, she dances, she acts. You know, she's a businesswoman. She does it all. I feel like if just being in her presence, I could just absorb so much knowledge and so much from her. So I would. Definitely. Oh, her, between her and Janet Jackson, both of them have had that longevity. Make they, they're both like divas. They're both, you know, amazing. So I would definitely, really, really, really love to do that. Definitely. That'll be a cool mashup. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be one for the books for me. Oh yeah. So you you know um, how the music industry is saturated. Um, there are a lot of talents out there. So, I don't know if you struggle with this or not, but tell us about your mindset and staying authentic and different from the rest. Um, I think when, to stay authentic, I think the only thing that I could come up with about that is just to be myself. Like, there can, mm-hmm. there can never be another me, you know what I mean? There can never be another, as much as I love Beyonce, there can never be another her, you know what I mean? I can never be her as much as I wish I could, but... It's, it's, there can never be another you so I think as long as in my head I stick to being myself you know because we've all heard that the music industry can be very very toxic and you know there could be a lot of people who would try mm-hmm. to change you or try to make you into something that you're not or that would try to tell you that oh you should do this because this will happen if you do that and you know what I mean I just feel like if I 
stay true to myself and also surround myself with people who who I can trust, who know me, who, who aren't afraid to let me know, look, you need to relax, you're doing too much, like this isn't you, you know what I mean? Like I think not only keeping yourself in that situation, but also having people around you who ground you as well could, you know, make sure that you don't become somebody that you're not, you know what I mean, and become a fake person or become, you know, a complete different situation, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Um, going back a bit to like the outset and creation of Amira, um, mm-hmm. tell us the origin story. Where did it all start for you on this musical journey? Um, well, it, uh, I've always wanted to sing. Since I was small, like I told you, my mom, she used to sing. So I grew up around her and then my grandfather sung as well. So I've always been surrounded by music. But the thing about me was I was extremely shy. And I was, I wasn't confident in myself. So I would hear a song that somebody was saying like, um, a Mariah Carey or, you know, a Whitney Houston or a JoJo. I would hear them sing a song. And in my head, I would think that if I couldn't sing that song the way they did, then I wasn't talented and that I couldn't, no one would want to hear me because if I couldn't hit those notes or do that riff or sing with that amount of passion or emotion, then you can't sing no one want to hear you but as I grew up I sort of kind of I took note like I said I listened to a lot of different genres and I took note that every person every single artist sings differently and you can give 10 artists one song and I guarantee they will probably sound completely different in singing it you know what I mean so that made me feel like you know that people like variety no one wants you know you to sing a song completely like somebody else and after I realized that I realized that even though I probably couldn't hit that same note that that singer was doing then I I still was a a talented person so once I started realizing that I started to grow confidence in myself and I started to practice and I started to you know become more open with my talent like when I was in the fifth grade my teacher used to make me sing the star single banner every day you know Mm -hmm. what I mean so it's just just seeing their reactions and then singing in front of friends and family. It sort of kind of made me be, believe that okay, you you can sing. You don't have to be able to sound like a celebrity or a, an already established artist in order for people to you know consider you talented. So yeah. <laughs> so once I got that, I was okay. I just I just had to stop comparing myself to other people. And once I stopped doing that, I sort of kind of you know got out of my head and just you know, group in terms of my talent. So. Right. And you have a you have a few um, cover songs on your YouTube channel. Um, do you ever perform I those? I haven't performed them yet, but um, I'm start, I'm trying to um, get more comfortable with, you know, practicing in terms of like, like emotion and, you know, putting mm. my all into a song. So I take, like I was telling you before I take you know the songs that you know I love and I try to make them my own so that's where the cover thing comes from and you know posting them up you know just trying to build a fan base trying to let the people hear me so yeah so yeah yeah I think you have some aspects of emotions down pat because I watched your music video to mathematics and uh you you were nailing it (laughs) (laughs) thank you (laughs) no doubt and guys, if you want to check out the music video, check out our YouTube link. Uh, the link is actually in the description of this episode, so all you have to do is just click the link. I did all the work for you. Made it super easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely right. check that out. Guys. Yeah. So what's, what is your opinion of the music industry now? I think that it's become, like I said before, I think it's, it's very it can be very toxic. And I think that it nowadays, it doesn't really m- matter how talented you are anymore. I feel like, I feel like it's more about a game of the people, like your team. I feel like it's about them more than it is about the singer, like how well they can, you know, market you or promote you. Like you could have a singer who probably isn't, you know, you could have a, a singer A and singer B and singer A can, can blow her face off. She's a true vocalist, but singer B might not be as, you know, 
strong, vocally strong, but she will probably she could probably do better than Sanger A would because Sanger B has a better team behind her and they know how to market mm. her and they know where to put her music and they know, you know, what radio stations to play on and they know how to get the people behind her. But Sanger A doesn't have that strong of a team, so no one really knows who she is, you know what I mean? And I think mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's more about the business side versus the talent nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's difficult <laughs> yeah. because as much as singers and, you know, rappers wanted to be all about the art, it's not anymore. I kind of feel like you have to know how to play the game a little bit. Definitely. And, you know, the music business is, is definitely a business. And I think more so nowadays that... Uh, personalities are selling more than the talent itself yes definitely yeah um unfortunate i mean well fortunate for vigilantes radio we always talk to talented artists we don't necessarily talk to personalities you know um but have you experienced any of the toxic from the music industry as, as you say i've experienced people telling me that they can help me out and then lying to me I haven't experienced anybody trying to change me or anything yet, but I've had a bunch of people, you know, DM me or, you know, talk to me or, you know, claim that they could do A and B for me and then all, and ask for an, a, a crazy amount of money and then, mm. you know, come to find out they really were just lying. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's a bit of the toxicity of it, too. It's, it's all about the money as well. Like, no one's willing to... Not saying that, you know, people are wrong for, you know, wanting to get paid, but it's more about the money as well. Like, if, if you don't have any money behind you, you'll go nowhere because no one will really want to help you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's about, that's so far, <laughs> that's all that I've experienced in terms of people telling me one thing and then doing something completely different and just lying in my face. <laughs> right. How does that affect your trust? Um, because... It, I'm sure you have to like screen like who's legit and who's just yes. you know bumping their gums. Yes, it, it it definitely messes with the trust. Like me and my manager uh, Bridget, we were just talking, um, and we were sort of kind of we have like since I've been a couple the last past couple of days I've had a lot of people like follow me on social media I've had like a sparking social media and I had a couple of people you know come to me and say oh you know we know this person and we can you know shoot your stuff to them and we can tell them about you and da 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 and we read it and then the first thing we think is really like what's the catch like what do you want like I know it's, it's never just I want to help you or you know what I mean it's never genuine it's always a situation where someone's like okay but in order for me to do that you have to do this you know what I mean so it definitely messes with the trust and it definitely makes you very, very skeptical about who you work with. But that goes, you know, that goes to show that you also have to have a good team behind you and a good um, base as well because they have to have your back. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like you have, you have theirs, they have to have you as well. It's like you're a team, you know? So mm-hmm. we got to cover each other. <laughs> we yes, together. true. So, yeah. Yeah. So I talked to a lot of artists and uh, they experience the same thing you do uh, a lot of times, a lot of money gone, a lot of time wasted. And it kind of yeah. creates a hardness exterior. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like if that happens to you, like how would that affect your personality? I think it would definitely make me more guarded um, mm-hmm. because I think and honestly, I think that it would do that to everybody because it's only um you can't be lied to for, for 20, 30 times and not be guarded. You know what I mean? It's, it's at the point to where you're protecting yourself now. Like, it's not even just about your feelings or anybody else. It's about me. Because every time these people lie to me, my, my feelings are hurt. And I'm just like, I'm let down. So not only are you skeptical, but you're sort of kind of, you have this guard up. It's like, it's like a freaking, like, Fort Knox. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, it's, I could definitely see it happening, but I mean, it is what it is. It's just like if you if you're lied to too many times, it's just natural. I feel like for anybody to sort of kind of become a lot more skeptical and build up a a, a tougher exterior, especially in a business like this where you it, it's money involved. So mm-hmm. you and then you have to worry about that too. <laughs> so yep. you can't exactly just keep dealing out money to 
anybody who says that they can help you because you don't know that. You don't know if they are true to their word. So, right. you know, <laughs> and of course, you know, you got to protect the money because oh, yeah. it doesn't grow a team. So you got to make sure that, you know, you're not just blowing money. So yep, yep. there's that too. So you raised the interesting point, um, and I'm glad you did say that. Okay, like, let's say, for instance, someone with credentials that just may be like a background player, and they approach mm-hmm. you, and, you know, your, your guard is up, but they are so important and really don't have the time to go around all the loops. You know, they need to answer right now, right then kind of thing. Um, and I think it kind of works the same way in dating and relationships you know a person can only have their heart broken so many times before you know there's a little guard or a brick wall over their heart and it makes it even harder for somebody who's really genuine who wants to invest time but it's so much trouble you know breaking through the bricks that it's it's not really worth it yeah um what is your thoughts on that I just think that with situations like that I, I I would hope that the person that is genuine would would sort of kind of give, like, I'm going to use myself, give me a little bit of time. Because if I tell you, because I'm going to tell you why I, I am the way I am. And I would hope that you would understand that it's not, it's not you per se. It's not you. It's just the fact that I've had so many people do what you're doing. And then I, I, I give in and I, you know, give them money or I agree to whatever terms they say and then I sort of kind of get screwed over in the process so I would just hope that you would if you're genuine just 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 work with me you know what I mean like if you if you if you're you know if you have the time I guess if it's a rush situation then I guess not that would probably just be a missed opportunity or I would just have to suck it up and, and trust once again but I would hope that the person who is the genuine uh, party would you know work with me a little bit like mm-hmm. give me a little bit of like, time to sort of kind of feel like I'm not about to be played for the thousand times you know yeah so what do you think about um the R&B and pop genre overall do you feel like there's too much rap culture or rap swag in R&B nowadays I think I think rap and just off the just on its own is sort of kind of I don't even know what it is anymore <laughs> because I feel like it's it's no longer about something. It's just you know guys who get lucky and you know they might have this one great you know song that hits and that's it. You know what I mean? Like they'll make millions off of that song and then you'll either never hear from them again or they'll put out music outside of that and it won't be anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. think that it's, it's so easy for, and then I don't even understand what these rappers are talking about nowadays anyway, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. I just think that it's so easy for, you know, one hit wonders to come out in terms of rap because it's, it's no longer about longevity, you know what I mean? And I guess the same could be said for, you know, the pop industry as well, it's, is no longer about the longevity of it. Like, you don't have the, the Whitney Houston's and stuff anymore. You have people who, you know, come out and maybe do a, an album or two that does really well. I mean, don't worry, you have your, your um, exception, but mostly you'll do that, and then you probably won't hear from them as much. Yeah. You know, or their albums won't do as well. So I just think those... I don't know what's up with the hip hop genre. I can't even tell you what's up with that one. Yeah. R&B isn't the same either. Yeah, I was going to so, say, like, I hope you, you know, really change that aspect. Because if somebody asked me, yo, what's what's the hottest R&B song? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you who's yeah. the hottest R&B singer because either they're rapping. I don't know. It just created something new. So I hope you bring, you know, R&B back to its original form. And I know you oh, include pop. But because you, you actually have to include, you know, some some kind of marketability in, and I think pop is definitely mar- marketable on uh, this day and age. But um, yeah, I, I just think there's too much rap culture in R and B nowadays. It's hard to tell yeah. the two genres apart. Yeah, I just think um, R and B in terms of like <laughs> it, the way it was 10, 20 years ago is it's, it's sort of kind of no longer in that space anymore. Yeah. 
So, I don't know. I'm going to try to bring you back, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope so. I hope so. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, you're in Maryland. Um, mm-hmm. Baltimore, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, how much room for your music style and genre is there right now in Baltimore? I think there's a lot of them here. I mean, mostly you. I know a lot of Baltimore is known for their house music, but I definitely think that they're open to um, R&B and pop music. It's not like it's just strictly all about house. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I definitely think it can it can work here. Like I've had quite a few friends and family who actually live in Baltimore and friends of friends who just who who actually listen to mathematics and really jam to it so I definitely think it's it's possible that they can hit here as well yeah are you making friends with any other um R&B acts out there in the city not yet I've had um well she's she's not R&B she's folk but I met um a folk artist a couple of um weeks ago and me and her talked and you know bonded a little bit but she she's not R&B but I haven't I haven't met any R&B yet so okay you're um, currently I'm number one yeah, oh yeah okay so you're currently number one on Reverb Nation congratulations for Yay! that thank yeah. you that's dope that's dope <laughs> and there's that's a lot it. of talent you know I went yeah. through and uh yeah I gotta just gotta say again congratulations for being number one thank you Thank you. Definitely. So what's coming up for you in the near future? Uh, my EP. Um, so Mathematics was the first single off of it. Uh, it we haven't titled it anything yet. It's untitled, but okay. you know, we'll release that ASAP. But I'm hoping to get it out um, at sometime in the summer of this year. So um, we have Mathematics first single, and then we are hoping to release the second single within a couple of months so nice. that is what's going on with me <laughs> all right <laughs> any shows get some performances and stuff. yeah yeah i'm looking to get those too you know we need those so yeah cool deal all right so how about some website info you know social media links where do you want people to find you yeah. and and, okay. and dive into your work on the internet uh you can follow me on um twitter um facebook soundcheck SoundCloud, SoundCloud, all at Amira's Music, uh, Amira, A-M-I-R-A-S, M-U-Z, as in Zebra I-C. Uh, you can follow my website, my artist website, that's www.amirasmusic.com. Uh, Amira, once again, is A-M-I-R-A-S, M-U-Z, I-C. And, um, yeah, so uh, uh, Instagram as well, <laughs> um, it's the same, Amira's Music. Um, I, I update all of those um, social media sites daily. So anything connecting to me is on those sites. Um, videos, radio interviews, uh, performances when there are some. Um, links to my music video, which I put out uh, in January. Mathematics music video, I put that out. So that's linked on um, Twitter as well. So yeah, you know, you can find me. Just um, Amira's music. A M I R A S N U Z I C on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, and Instagram. Dope. And guys, just in case you get your fingers didn't tight fast enough, I have all those links in the description of the show. So all you have to do is click the links. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of social media, I need a little help, okay? Because sometimes mm-hmm. it just seems like a nine to five job. How do you balance, <laughs> you know? being in the studio, living a regular life, and then updating all these social media sites that you are on? Uh, I think I'm just used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just, it's sort of kind of like, when you've done it for so long, you sort of kind of know when you, when it, when you haven't updated it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, and it's, it's I have also have a, a routine too, so you know, uh-huh. getting out of bed and stuff like that and, you know, tweeting and asking everybody how they're doing, like what's going on, like, you know, photos on Instagram as well, um, links and stuff. So I think in order to get into it, really, just get like a routine. If it's something that you can't do, like if you can't remember to do off the top of your head, just do a routine. Because <laughs> trust me, you do it enough times, you it'll be like clockwork. <laughs> so <laughs> that definitely works for me, so... 
So do you focus like on particular ones or how do, how do you do that? Uh, my, my favorite is Twitter. Like I, I can tweet all day, all day. I can tweet all day. <laughs> um, Instagram as well and Facebook too. But my number one is Twitter. So, yeah, I could just, and it could, I feel like with Twitter, it's not just about, you know, my music. It's about, like, it's like yesterday. I, um, I, I, where I live in Baltimore, we, we're having a snowstorm. So, I wanted, I was going to see Black Panther today. So, mm. I couldn't see it because of the snowstorm. <laughs> oh, man. So, I was a little bummed. So, you know, I sort of kind of, you know, ventured a little bit on Twitter. And, like, my fans is like, oh, you know, it's okay. You know, I, there's always next week. You know, so right. or Monday or something like that. So it's it's definitely one of my favorite Twitter is. So plus nice. it's easy. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna have uh, breakfast. Tweet that having <laughs> breakfast. I'm like getting in the car. I'm gonna tweet that getting in the car. See how <laughs> it goes. You, know? like that. <laughs> word for word. you know, I don't know. Like you got an interview today with um, somebody. You know, just before you, you know, when you're on your way to the interview, on my way to the interview with so-and-so, tune in, da 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 you know? Now, you don't have to do it word for word, not every single thing that you do, of course, but it's definitely <laughs> <true>. <laughs> Not just messing with you. <laughs> if you do that, you know, uh, we, 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 we light up Twitter with tweets and Snapchat, like, hey, such and such is, you know, being interviewed tonight, check them out, and then we'll post a picture in Snapchat, and then, you know, we'll go from there. Oh. Uh, and I forgot my Snapchat. So I'm on Snapchat as well. Uh, Snapchat at always a mirror, always with a Z at the end in a mirror. Hey, I took care of that. That's also in the link as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we are at our favorite part of the show that everybody just love and rave about. It's called the hot seat. And after our music oh, break, yeah, yeah it, we'll put a mirror in our uh, hot seat and our fans absolutely love this segment or sing or um, share a poem with us maybe she have a inspirational I have a dream speech who knows or maybe she can freestyle rap or tell us a corny joke or a real good joke who knows stories we love stories I have popcorn and tea or play a live instruments well you never know what these creative minds and vessels were produced in the spotlight and tonight yes tonight we'll find out if a mirror has what it takes to be put on the spot a test of her true artistry and maybe even some hidden talents. But for right now, we have Amira with her song, Mathematics. Let's get into it. Yay! One, two, what you gonna do? Cause I'm here for you and I really wanna be there. But now we'll see for sure the party's over. You and I are nothing but trouble. Multiplied and it's a damn shame down she surprise Ooh, oh. and every time i hear from you i get such a clear of you because it's like trying to catch a falling star i can't do it ask me why it's been so long because you treated me so wrong and it's like trying to wind a paradise i Throw me aside And never again will I live your life Cause now it seems for sure the crying's over Can't believe you can turn and walk away from me And watch me while my heart was breaking Boy, it's your turn to see me as I'm leaving
embodied everything that we communicated in this interview tonight definitely R&B that is something I can dig okay the lyrics on point her vocals oh my goodness wow she's going places now you know why she's number one right incredible songwriting the, the track was on point guys you should really go peep the music video if you really want a visual because I think this particular record was planned accordingly and executed greatly that's my opinion so I'll be rocking to this song you know I'm not really experiencing any kind of you know breakup in my relationship right definitely a cool song to rock out to because the vocals are on point so the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight but they while their companions slept were tolling upward in the night that's a lyric from Harry Longfellow. I don't know if you know who that guy is. He's a great uh, person who wrote a lot of poems. So there is opportunity everywhere. And in order to take advantage of opportunity, you must be prepared. That means paying your dues. Nothing is more frustrated than to see an opportunity come along and not be in a position to benefit from it. It pays to be prepared. And that comes down to plain um, hard work. It's not usually glamorous. It's not always exciting. And it's definitely not always fun. It is, however, always necessary. That Olympic athlete makes it look so effortless. But remember, he's been practicing for years. The business professional seems to have the Midas touch. But she spent years in her field and on the road and learning every detail of her business, plus the countless failures. Oh, yeah. Anyone can have a great idea without effort and action. It's often easy to spot an opportunity, but even the best opportunity demands preparation, effort, and commitment to come into fruition. The more you work, the luckier you will become. Take that from me, Dini Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bun. Let's bring the woman of the hour back on. Amira, you're now live in our hot seat. What do you have for us? Um, okay, well, I guess I'll sing you uh, the first verse of mathematics. <laughs> nice. Okay, so. <clears throat> One, two, what you gonna do? Cause I'm here for you and I really wanna be there. But now we see the show, the party's over. You and I but nothing but trouble multiplied. And it's a damn shame, don't be surprised. Oh yeah, yeah. And every time I hear from you, I get such a clear of you. And if I try to catch a falling star, I can't do it. Ask me why it's been so long, cause it treated me so wrong. And if I try to unwind the paradise, I won't do it. Awesome. I'm sure everyone is standing up right now giving you an ovation, right? Thank cool. you. <laughs> <laughs> that was real cool. Thank you. All right. So a real serious question. How about, you know, playing the game or playing a role versus being yourself? How much of the real you are in these songs that you're putting out? 
uh, a lot. I mean, I, I don't think I could be able to sing a song if it wasn't really me. You know what I mean? If it wasn't something that I could relate to, you know? Because then where would your emotion come from? How would you how would you be able to talk about something that isn't something that you, you know, aren't or haven't seen? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think a lot a lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I so. think I read somewhere where you want it to be as relatable as possible because you mm-hmm. don't feel like some celebrities uh, celebrities actually play the position they're supposed to play when it comes to like real life events. Yeah. And you yeah, know, right. when it comes to the yeah, when it comes to the internet, like you can actually paint whatever picture or paint whatever reality you want to the crowd be whatever you want to be on the internet. Um, what's mm-hmm. your opinion on that? Um, I think that I think that goes a, a lot along with what we were talking about earlier about the industry itself. They you it's, they sort of kind of want you to be a specific way in order to sell. So, and if you're not that way, then they'll try to get you to change who you are in order to fit that mold, which will in turn turn into money. You know what I mean? So, I would think that you know, I would I'm, I don't I don't want to be that way, and I'm going to try my hardest to never turn into that. I want to be true to myself, and I want to my music to really signify me. In, in its entirety, you know what I mean? I don't want somebody to, you know, break me down just to bring me back up and to create me into a mode that they think, you know, would, would sell more records or would sell out more shows, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just think that's a shame because you it, you, you actually, when you, if you've ever watched like a behind the music or a documentary on these singers and songwriters or rappers who actually came out years later saying how unhappy they actually were when they were on top of the world. Like, you know what I mean? Multi-platinum right. albums, you know, sold out shows. They were honestly very unhappy because they couldn't be themselves. They couldn't really stand in their truth because they were being held back by their team because their teams were telling them that, look, in order for you to sell this record, you need to be this type of person. Whether or not it was really who they were, they had no choice in the matter and they had to do it, which in turn made them very unhappy, which I think a lot of, you know, celebrities, while they turn to, like, you know, drugs and vices and stuff because they are unhappy in their everyday life. And it's not like they can escape it, you know. It's what they do on a daily basis. So right. it's just it's sad, you know, that that's, that that's what people have to do in order to be successful. You have to change who you are. Yes, totally agree. I think we got a lot of cool insight from you, which I think is very cool. Um, any last words? Uh, I think I'll give a give a couple of shout outs. I just wanna, you know, thank a couple of people for getting me as far as I've I've gotten so far. Um, you know, my my family, my fans, Spotlight PR, um, my manager. <laughs> it's 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 definitely, you know, I definitely appreciate it. You as well for let let me on your show. I really, really appreciate it because it's, I'm an independent artist, and it's, it's it's hard, you know, trying to <laughs> make things happen on your own, you know. So I definitely appreciate the um the support from anybody who's you know giving it to me. No but doubt. um, yeah. So I guess um yeah, don't forget you know social media. You can find me, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is at Amir's Music, A M I R A S M U Z I C. Uh, Snapchat is always Amira, A-L-W-A-Y-Z, Amira, A-M-I-R-A. And um, thank you guys also for listening to me. (laughs) Those of you who, you know, are actually paying attention to this and, you know, thank you. So, and I hope I made a couple of fans tonight. (laughs) But, yeah, so thank you. All right, thanks to you. Thank you my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on the Google Play or iTunes store, or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to the radio at only one media group.com if it's music please label it by artist and title here's my disclaimer we are genre free 
We do not judge, and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show, so deal with it. <laughs> nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in, either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. And now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.